speak to me that I may speak in living echoes of thy tone. As thou hast sought, so let me seek thine erring children lost and lone. Oh, fill me with thy fullness, Lord, until my very heart o'erflow. In kindling thought and glowing word, thy love to tell thy praise to show. Oh, use me, Lord, use even me, just as thou wilt and when and where. Until thy blessed face I see, thy rest, thy joy, thy glory share. the good part of it this is the first Sunday of the month and so we do we have any birthdays this month we do oh, Lana. Lana? They're, listed. they're listed in the bulletin and Eric, Lana, oh Charlie, Bonnie Alice yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen it yet they're at the bottom on the page on the other side on the inside Oh, in August, we celebrate Bonnie Dillard, Alice Mosley, Lana Christensen, Charlotte Boyd, Kim Reed, Harry Probst, Aiden Giroux, and then we'll wait for the anniversary. <laughs> so, you ready? Happy birthday! Announcements that are coming up on uh, August the 6th, which is in two days. We have a board meeting in the fel in the fellowship hall at 6:30. Uh, then we have uh, on the 11th we have a men's meeting uh, that's at 8:30, and then it's showing that there's so a few other things like a district meeting at Coming First United Methodist at 4 o'clock. So just keep those read those and you know the details for those. And then our good news is on August the 5th. So we are still needing some cooks and servers, and so uh, if there's and there's a note in here, if any servers want to carpool, that they can meet at the fellowship hall at 5:30. And then also we're serving in our South Hall food pantry. That's on the 26th. And then I was thinking, I know it says in here details to follow. We homecoming is coming up, so that is September the 15th. So keep that in mind that that's usually a potluck, and uh, you know that we bring things you know that we bring things and so uh, but it says stay tuned for details so we'll have more information about that later and then we'll also have a well root family services uh, special offering is coming up that same day and uh, are there any other any other announcements anything else no, I just, um, I want to emphasize that the board meeting is open to all church members um, it is a way for you to Stay in touch and involved in the life and the ministry, not just of Oakwood First United Methodist Church, but the denomination as a whole. 
um, but it is a way for you to keep plugged in in what is happening here locally. So I want to make sure that everybody knows that it is open. I have had a board member who said that they won't be able to attend, so I will have a Zoom link. So if you need access to that Zoom link, you're welcome to do that. Just remember that if you're not a board member, um, you are there to listen and observe, um, but the dialogue stays between the board members. So if you need access to that link, just email me. Okay. <clears throat> and so one of the scripture readings uh, that was in our lectionary was a really good one. Is, is It is Psalm 51 and it's 1 through 12. And it says, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So that you are uh, proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sin and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. And so anyhow, I thought there are several songs that are, when you read that, there's at least three that I know of that are in there. And so anyhow, I think it's easier to remember some of the scripture when you can tie it to a song that you're thinking, ooh, I'm actually singing scripture. And so uh, anyhow, but I just thought about how that that's even thinking about how that you know when you start your prayer that sometimes you ask God to please forgive you if there's anything you've done you know to try to search your soul to see if there's anything that you need to ask forgiveness for and just to see that if you've done your best and so just keep that in mind and so anyhow we will go on and bow our heads for prayer Lord Jesus bless the service this morning we do want to thank you for this beautiful day that you have uh, that you have created you have given us beautiful things to look at and that uh, and just uh, we do want to lift up the people that are in the path of that the tropical storm that and the ones that and with the fires that are going on that we know there are some traumatic things that are happening and that just uh, be with those people and be with those firefighters and the National Guard the ones that are doing the the, the serving that they that they do and and uh, putting their lives in the in the front that they're the first responders and but uh, do bless the service this morning. Bless Pastor Emmy. She brings the message. And just uh, let us be able to come away from the service today and take something with us. Let it just soak into us that we take it with us the rest of our lives and that we're able to pull on it so that we can use it when the occasion arises. And we do want to thank you for this day. Amen. Did y'all catch all those hymns in that one little passage? Did you hear one of your favorites? Oh, wash me and I will be whiter than snow. I love it. Let's all stand and sing. I was afraid if I mentioned them that CCLI, the, the police would cut the service. So. I might have just gotten us in trouble. <laughs>
Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and in the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Well, good morning. Good morning. Whew, it has been a week, y'all. It has been a week. It has been crazy week at the Neat Hammer House. Um, but a good week too. Lauren came home yesterday afternoon. She'll be home for a week from UGA. Um, so I'm super excited and she goes back next Friday. Um, so I am thankful to have her home for the week. I will say she's grown a lot as she's been gone, but she's not been gone quite long enough. Does that make sense? <laughs> for my empty nesters, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so pray for me this week um, as we readjust to having a teenager in the house and then as we again say goodbye to her and send her off into the world of school. So what can we be praying for for you or what can you be thankful for this week? Yes, sir. Grandparents to great grandparents. Nice. When are they due? Don't know yet. Okay. Just know that they are. Yes. That is awesome. Awesome, awesome. Congratulations to y'all. Anybody else? I'm honestly grateful for these old hymns. Yeah. I say it all the time. <laughs> And I might have gotten us in trouble earlier. <laughs> I love the fact that we can send this service out. I love the fact that my mom and I can worship together, but they don't take into account spontaneous worship or the Holy Spirit. So it's going to be you fine. Can take the fine out of my paycheck. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> I'm not worried. You know, if we have to, we can edit it out, so it'll be fine. We haven't had any warnings as far as I know, so we're all right. <laughs> yeah, we'll be fine. And if it, if it is an error, then he'll just go in and he'll just go, whoop, sorry, Dave. <laughs> we'll account for it somewhere. I know. Good stuff. Good stuff. Anybody else? I want to remember Jackie Reed um, on Tuesday. She goes in for her third round. Tuesday, right? She's going Monday. Fifth. On the 5th. So tomorrow. Couldn't remember if it was Monday or Tuesday, but I know she's going in um, for her third round of chemo tomorrow. Um, so continue to pray for her. She's doing well. Um, she and I exchanged some texts. Um, and she said she's tired, but she's doing okay. But she is so thankful for your cards, for your prayers. She's so thankful for this church, and she's ready to come back. So she's halfway, y'all, truly halfway. Tomorrow is round three of four. So today is the halfway point truly for her in this saga of chemo. And then hopefully in six weeks, we'll see her back here feeling a whole lot better. I told her, I said, don't worry. The, the fatigue is normal. I said, um, it'll go away quickly once you, once you get done. So, all right, let us go to our God in prayer. Father, it is easy for us to go through the motions of spirituality. We want to say the right prayers and think that they have found a magical key to make holiness appear in our lives. But the reality, God, is we are empty vessels. And we hunger and thirst for something that will sustain us through all the times of our lives. We chase after things that will disappoint and hurt. And look past the very thing that will heal and cleanse our lives. 
Christ, you are the bread of life, the manna from heaven, which was and is sent to feed and sustain us all in the wilderness through which we travel. Father, help us to stop running after the glitz and the glitter, the easy wealth, but help us to look truly for the one who will quench and nourish our souls. And that's you, God. God, you know the prayers that we have lifted up to you. The thanksgivings that we give thanks for. But God, I also lift up the teachers and the administrators and the students as they return to school on Friday. God, in a world where COVID is starting to surge again, we just ask that you keep all of them safe. While this strain is not as, not as debilitating as what we once experienced, it can still create a little PTSD in people. So God, I just ask that you calm our spirits. Lord, as we lifted up the names of peoples and people and situations which lay heavy on our hearts today that need your healing, help us to remember that we stand continually in need of your healing mercy, all of us, each one of us here in this place and those online. Bring us to you with open and repentant hearts for your loving care. And as we receive the wondrous gift of bread and wine today, may we truly be reminded that Christ nurtures and feeds us with his own life. When we have been nourished, may we go from this place renewed and committed to serve you with our very lives. Lord, we come to you today with a bending heart. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
Our scripture today comes from Ephesians 4, verses 1 through 14. Let us hear the word of God. I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness and patience, bearing with one another in love making every effort to obtain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knits together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You know, we're at a critical or pivotal point in the book of Ephesians. Paul has spent the first three chapters of the epistle kind of laying out this profound doctrinal foundation. He's unveiled the riches of God's grace our position in Christ and the divine ministries or mysteries now revealed to the church. But now we turn to chapter 4 and Paul shifts his focus from doctrine to duty. From behavior or from belief to behavior. The transition is marked by two significant words. In verse 4 1, therefore and beseech. Therefore signals a call to action based on the truth that Paul has already written about in the first three chapters. The Christian life is not built on ignorance but on knowledge of God's Word. 
The better we understand the biblical doctrine, the easier it becomes to live out our Christian duties. The word beseech, or in the translation that we read from today, beg, reflects Paul's heartfelt plea for us to respond to God's grace with the life that glorifies him. Unlike the Old Testament where blessings were conditional on obedience, in Christ, God has already blessed us abundantly. Our obedience is now in response to his love and his grace. And I'm going to give you a secret. I think it's kind of always been that way. It was us. I don't think God changed. I think man forced the obedience through law. And we've talked about that a little bit this summer. How law kind of hampered our relationship with God. I don't think God's love or his grace ever really changed. I think he wanted us to be obedient. That's why he gave us the Ten Commandments. But he didn't give us all the other many laws. Those were all man-made. And when Christ came, the Ten Commandments didn't go away. Jesus said, I didn't come to throw out the old. I came to explain what was meant. So our obedience is now a response to his love and grace. Got to turn it on. Thanks. <clears throat> Paul begins by urging us to walk worthy of the calling we have received, emphasizing the need for unity among believers. This unity, however, is not uniformity. Unity comes from within a spiritual grace, while uniformity results from external pressure. Paul outlines the attributes necessary to preserve the unity of the Spirit in verse 3. He talks about humility. Humility means putting Christ first, others second, and ourselves last. It involves knowing and accepting and being ourselves for God's glory. God doesn't want us to think too highly or too lowly of ourselves, but he wants us to recognize our worth in him. Then we have gentleness. Sometimes in the Bible we call this meekness. It's not weakness, though. Gentleness or meekness is not weakness. It's a power that's under control. Jesus describes this as meek, having a meek and lowly heart in Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29. He displayed this attribute even as he drove out those money changers from the temple. Remember when he turned the tables upside down and drove them out? Then we have patience. Patience is the ability to endure discomfort without retaliation. It's a critical aspect of maintaining unity. Yes, my patience is being tried this week, and that's okay. Because through humility and gentleness, I can have patience. He also talks about bearing one another with one another in love. What does that mean? It involves making a conscious effort to maintain relationships despite the differences and challenges of those relationships. The pastor who married Mark and I told us once, that maintaining unity in our family, in our marriage, or even in the church, it's hard work. It's not something that comes easy. It requires effort. And then bond of peace. 
And this is when God's peace rules over our heart and it fosters unity among believers. Paul provides a doctrinal foundation of our unity in verses 4 through 6. True Christian unity is built on shared spiritual realities, non-superficial agreements. Paul lists seven foundational truths that unite all believers. We believe in one body, and that body is the church. The body of Christ comprises of all Christ's true believers. One spirit, the Holy Spirit that dwells and empowers us every day. One hope. We share the same glorious future in Christ, and that gives us hope. One Lord. Jesus Christ is the Lord of all believers. One Lord, the three in one, the triune God. One faith. Our faith is rooted in the gospel of Jesus Christ. One baptism. Baptism symbolizing our union with Christ and with each other. When we do our vows at baptism, we promise to surround whoever is being baptized and to support them in their faith. That binds us to them. And then one God and Father. God is the Father of all believers, transcending all distinctions. Paul emphasizes the importance of doctrinal, doctrinal, sorry, it's a hard word for me this morning, doctrinal purity, unity built on anything other than biblical truth is unstable. The local church has to uphold the truth in love as a purity of doctrine and love. And you know what? Both are essential for unity in the church. So the gifts of unity come up in, in verses 7 through 11. We've talked about grace and unity in 1 through 3, grounds of unity in 4 through 6. Now we're looking at the gifts of unity. In this section, Paul moves from our commonalities as Christians to our differences. Each believer has been given a spiritual gift for the unity of the body of Christ. It's important to distinguish between natural abilities and spiritual gifts. Why we're all born with natural talents, spiritual gifts are gifts that are given by God for the purpose of serving Him and strengthening the church. Our natural abilities might be things like art or music. And sometimes music can also be a spiritual gift when it's used for strengthening the church and for serving the one who wants us to serve him so desperately. Discovering our spiritual gifts involves fellowship with other believers these gifts are not for personal gratification, but they're for building up the body of Christ. Paul provides a list of spiritual gifts in 1 Corinthians 12, Romans 12, and then here in Ephesians 4.11. It's interesting because these lists are not identical. They're very different. There's some overlap, but they are different. And sometimes I think this indicates that these lists may not be exhaustive. There might be spiritual gifts that are not listed. But it's important for us to remember that all gifts are important. 
and every believer's contribution, it's necessary for the church to function and to function effectively. For us to do the work of the church and of the Holy Spirit in the community, we have to work together. And each gift has to be used. That's why I always say, the board meetings are open. They're open to the body of the church. Because every board member has a different gift, but not all the gifts are covered on the board. And so it's important for us to have feedback from the body of the church. We also have growth of unity in verses 12 through 16. Paul envisions the church on two, le two levels. The universal body of Christ and the local congregation. What I find interesting is both are called to grow in spiritual maturity and in unity. It isn't one over the other. They're both called to grow. And spiritual unity is not something that we can create. It is a reality in Christ that we must protect and maintain. Truth and love are essential for unity. Both. Paul calls us to speak the truth in love so that we can grow together and become more Christ-like. So as you reflect on this passage this week, we're reminded that our unity in Christ is a precious gift that requires our diligent effort to preserve. And I wanted to give you some practical steps to foster unity not just in the church at large, but here in our church, here at Oakwood. I didn't make a slide for these, and maybe I should have. But the first one is to prioritize humility and gentleness. We have to remember to put Christ first, others second, and embrace a humble and gentle attitude in all of our interactions. When we put Christ first, whether we agree or disagree on a direction or a policy or a procedure or hours or whatever it is, nothing else matters when we put Christ first. We have to practice patience and love. Patience and love are crucial for maintaining unity. Let us bear with one another the work and work diligently to preserve our relationships. Next, uphold doctrinal truth. Our unity must be built on the foundation of biblical truth. To do that, we have to study God's word diligently and stand firm in our faith. You can't uphold doctrinal truth if you don't study the doctrine itself. So what are you doing to study every day? Then we have our spiritual gifts. And as I mentioned, each one of us has a unique role to play in the body of Christ. So we have to discover and use our spiritual gifts to serve and to build up the church. If you haven't taken a spiritual gifts assessment in a while, let me know. I'll send one to you. I can print it out for you here at the church and give it to you. And then we can talk about it. And you can decide, where do I want to plug in here at Oakwood? Or maybe my spiritual gifts aren't truly inside the walls. Maybe they're outside the walls of this church. How can I use my spiritual gifts in the community? And lastly, we have to seek growth together. 
we have to commit to growing together in spiritual maturity, speaking the truth in love and encouraging one another in our walk with Christ. And this happens by being in small groups or accountability groups where you can hold each other accountable in a loving and compassionate way. Last week I talked about a group that I meet with every week. I actually have two. I have one that I look at from my pastoral standpoint, and I have another one that I talk about all the rest of life with. It doesn't mean that my pastoral group doesn't get life. They get my life too. But the people that I talk with about life, I don't talk about pastoral things with them because, well, I can't. I just can't. That's part of my vow with you when we talk about things that are confidential. Wesley used to require people to be in a small group. Did you know that? He called these bands. But Wesley used to require that people be involved in a band in order for them to stay in the church. And they were people that were at a similar place that they were in their belief or their walk with Christ. There was never somebody who was the matriarch or the patriarch of the group or the one that was more knowledgeable. It was always a group of people that were equally yoked and they moved together as a group and they talked about real life stuff and their struggles. And it's what I refer to now as an accountability group. That's what Wesley started with. He started with small groups and accountability and you had to be there every week. And you had to talk about hard stuff. And you also talked about the easy stuff and the great things that happened. So those meetings, they're an important part of your Christian life, and your Christian journey. So Paul's message to the Ephesians here in this verse that we looked at today is a powerful call to unity in the body of Christ. We are united by our shared faith, by the spirit that dwells inside of us and called to share the same hope. So let us respond to God's grace by living lives worthy of our calling, preserving the unity of the Spirit and growing together in love and in truth. Paul calls us to be one in, this, one in Christ, and he gave us a tool to do that. He gave us this tool and this gift of communion a symbol of our unity and Christ's love for us and this morning we're going to have the opportunity to partake in communion let us join together first as we confess And receive the invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not done your will. And we have broken your law. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. 
Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made a covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, he delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his asc ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat, this, this is my body, which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of, my new, of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts, in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Father Almighty, now and forever. Amen.
On that night, when Christ gathered with the disciples around the table, he gave this extraordinary gift. He said, all who are worthy can come and partake. The table is open. Come, let us feast. of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
unity. God calls us to be unified with him, with his son, with the Holy Spirit, and with him as the Father, the triune God we are called to be in unity with. Think about the things that we've shared today. If you took notes, I hope you'll go back and look at them. If you didn't take notes, go back and watch the replay. We'll make sure it doesn't get hung up somewhere along the way. It'll get posted. But just know that God, God loves you. He desires you. He wants a relationship with you. He not only wants a relationship with you, but he wants you to grow in your relationship with him. And in the Methodist church, we call that growing in sanctification. We talk about once you say yes to that relationship, everything you do after that is to grow to be more Christ-like and to grow in that sanctification. If you're not sure where to start or if you need help finding something to study every day, I said we have to start in the Word. You have to start there. If you need help, let me know. I'll help you find something. All right? I'll be in the office on Tuesday this week. Not Wednesday, not Friday, Tuesday, because we have a board meeting. So I'll be in sometime about mid-morning, and I'll be here into the night. But I'm here to serve you anytime. All you have to do is text, email, or call. If I can't answer your call, I'll call you back. But I'm here to help you grow in your love for Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.